Hello, I'm Amanda Huell and this is week three of our trip around the world looking at a different artist each week and creating some work in their style. Last week we were in Switzerland and Germany with Paul Clay and this week we're off to Mexico to have a look at some work by Frida Kahlo. Here's Frida. You're probably familiar with her image. It's printed on all sorts of things at the moment. You see her on mugs, on bags, on t-shirts, posters, cards. She's really, really popular. Most of her work was self-portraits and she told the story of her life through her portraits. She's known as mother of the selfie because of her self-portraits. Her life was quite a sad life. Um, she was ill as a child, she had polio and she spent nine months in bed. She was well looked after and she got better, although she always had a weak right leg after that. Um, she always loved to paint and she was training to be a doctor. At 18, on her way home from college, she was on a tram which was hit by a bus and she was involved in quite a nasty accident and again had to spend a lot of time in bed. Her mother had a special easel made for her, so while she was lying in bed, she could paint. And Frida had a mirror attached to the ceiling above her bed, and she painted herself. She said, I am my own muse. I am the subject I know best, and the subject I want to better. And she spent her whole life telling her story through her self-portraits. She was a very strong, independent Mexican woman, really proud of her Mexican heritage. She felt very strongly in equality for everyone, regardless of race, religion, sex and gender. And has become a real icon of today. So despite having such a hard time as a child and a teenager, she fought through this and produced amazing paintings and artwork. There's a bit more about her on the worksheet if you want to have a look at it. It's on High Peak Community Arts website or you can Google her and find out a lot more details about her. I hope you enjoy working in her style. I'll see you later. So this week for the Frida Kahlo dem uh, activities, you're going to need your sketchbook. i put some pictures on the front of mine or some paper. You're also going to need a piece of coloured paper. If you haven't got coloured paper, you could use a page out of a magazine um, or a piece of brown paper. Um, you're going to need your pencils, pens, crayons, scissors, maybe a um, pencil sharpener and eraser. I put mine in a jam jar because they were so noisy last week. You might also need some glue and the cocktail stick to um, spread the glue on. And if you want to do the extra activity this week, you're going to need a magazine. And if you've got a foil container from a takeaway or a ready meal or some kind of little pot pie case, or if not, a piece of ordinary kitchen foil and a magazine. That's the extra activity. I'll put that out of the way at the moment. So, this week we're looking at Frida Kahlo. And we're going to start by looking at one of her self-portraits. In fact, we're going to look at two of her self-portraits. I'll just lean over and get that. So, the one that you can see there is called Fu Lang, Fu Lang Chang and I. Fu Lang Chang was Frida's pet monkey. She loved animals. She had a monkey, a dog, a parrot and a fawn as pets. And she often painted herself with animals and with beautiful um, plants around her. She loved nature. So this is a, another portrait of Frida with some monkeys. This is Fu Lang Chang and I. And you'll notice on this one, it's in a very fancy frame. This is actually a mirrored frame. It's got some engraving and some colour on around the edge. And she quite often put her portraits into really fancy frames. So we're going to have a go at doing a self-portrait in the style of Frida Kahlo. So 
So I'm going to keep this one here and move this one out the way. In this sketchbook, on the next page, I've been doing a few Frida Kahlo pages. This is a photograph of my daughter Amber. She's on holiday somewhere. Looks like she's having a really nice feast there, watermelon and everything. And she's done a portrait of herself from that photograph in the style of Frida Kahlo. And we've put a fancy frame around it. Now you could look at yourself in the mirror and do a self-portrait that way. You could use a photograph or you could draw someone else. If you don't want to draw yourself, you could draw someone in your family, a friend. You can use a photograph or you could draw somebody out of the newspaper or a magazine, a famous person or just someone in an advertisement or something. You could look at the telly, anyone you like, but find someone that you like the idea of drawing. Now when you do a self-portrait, or a portrait of anyone else for that matter, there's a couple of things that you need to look at. First of all, actually look where things are on your face. If you look at the eyes on this picture of Amber, we put a pencil across there, you'll see the eyes are about halfway down the face. Now you can't see Amber's ears on here, but if we look at Frida Kahlo's picture over here, you can see that her ear is on the same line as her eyes. So that's an important thing to start with. Have a look at where things actually are. The nose starts in between the eyes, comes down, joins onto the mouth. Look where things are, not where you think they should be. When you start your portrait, you start with a sort of roughly oval shape. Just do it very lightly in pencil. So the eyes are gonna come about halfway down and the ears are gonna be about halfway down and your nose will start from there. Now you might not have a chin like that, but if you start with a basic oval shape, then you can change it. So if your chin is a bit more pointed, you can change that later. If your chin is more rounded or square, you can change it, you can alter things later. Frida's hairline is quite high on that one. We go back to Amber. Her hair, again, the hairline is actually starting from the top. Hers is parted in the centre, just like Frida's actually, but Frida's is tied back so you can see her ears and Amber's is coming down. So look carefully where things should go, where, where your hair would start and how that would come down. And start very lightly in pencil and then add the detail. Just get the main sort of shape and where the features will go and then add to it. Amber's portrait is really bright and colourful. You've got a selection of pens and pencils and crayons. Amber's used everything in here. She's used wax crayons, she's used the felt pens, she's used the coloured pencils. So mix the things you use and don't be afraid of using colour. Don't try and do everything like one shade. Look at the, the tones, overlay the um, layers of crayon to get darker and lighter colours. And, you know, don't be afraid to add a bit of blue. Amber's got blue and green in here where the shadows are. So have a go at self-portrait. When you've done your self-portrait and you've got it on your page, you're going to make a frame for it. So this is where you need your coloured paper. Now, I've got a pink paper here. We used a beige one on there. You could draw the shape that you'd like your frame to be out there. Make sure your frame's going to fit over your portrait. If your portrait's a bit smaller, you can cut your um, paper smaller to start with. So you can draw an outline like I've done there and then get your scissors and you can cut a little hole in the centre and start cutting around the edge. But it's a bit fiddly. I find that quite difficult to do. So I'm going to put that to the side over there. And what I would do is I would fold your coloured paper in half and then fold it in half again. And then you could draw a bit of a frame shape if you want to, or you could, I'm just going to draw a bit of a frame shape, or you could just cut. So I've drawn a little bit of a shape there, any shape, however you want it. And now I'm going to cut that much easier then cutting into the middle of the page. I'm going to go around there like that. 
around there and up there. I'm going to put that bit aside. We can use that for some collage another week. Open it up and there's my frame. So I could put that around the portrait. It makes it look quite different having a different colour on it. So you do your frame and then you're going to use your glue to stick it down. Now remember with your glue, I've got one in there, you can just spread it, twist your cocktail stick in and then just spread it really thinly on. You only need a tiny bit of glue. If you put too much glue on, it doesn't stick, it just gets wet and messy. So you would just spread that around the edge and then stick it in place. When it's dry, I'm going to move that one off because I don't need that on numbers. When it's dry, you can use your pens or pencils to decorate your frame if you want to. And that's activity one. A self-portrait or a portrait of someone else in the style of Frida Kahlo. So now we're going to move on to activity two. We saw the monkey in the pit portrait with Frida and I said she also had, we'll look at that in a minute, I'll just put that on there so it won't distract us. She also had other pets. I'm going to turn this this way. I hope that's, you can see it. She had, there's the monkey. She had a dog. She had a fawn and she had a parrot. And Amber's made this colourful picture in with quite a Mexican feel to it with all Frida's um, pets on there. Now you could draw your own pet. You could draw your own pet anyhow you like. You can use pencils, pens, wax crayons, anything you like. You could just do a black and white drawing. Um, you could draw your own pet. You could be inspired by this picture, which is also on the handout. Or there's lots of lovely little Mexican animal sculptures. I'm going to shut my sketchbook now because these are two that I've cut out from pictures. These are from the British Museum. And they're really funky little sculptures. That one's really colourful. That's like a little donkey with two children riding on it. I think I've put some pictures of those I definitely have onto your worksheet. So it's an animal drawing challenge. So we're still drawing and colouring. Um, but this time, instead of a person, we're going to do some animals. Um, however you like. It can be a, just a totally... Um, realistic portrait of your pet or any animal that you've ever known you can copy one out of a magazine just have a go at drawing some animals and that's the second activity now the third activity I usually leave you to get on with on your own but this time I will do a little quick demonstration I'm just going to put the lid back on my glue so that doesn't dry up and we're going to have a look at doing something like this this is based on the idea of Mexican tin art and the pattern is inspired by a piece of jewellery that belonged to Frida Kahlo. I'm just going to find it in my book and I can show you. Whoops! So this is a necklace that Frida Kahlo owned and in this picture here when you look up close there's some, you can see birds here. This is a locket that's open, so it's obscuring it, but there's birds on either side of the locket and seashells down here at the bottom. So again, it's got animals and nature in it, birds and shells. You don't have to do birds and shells. You can use any image you like for your engraving. You could do animals. You could do a self-portrait again. Now, I've made this one from the base of a... Um, a foil tray that had a some kind of meal in it, a, a ready meal or something, and I cut the base out. You can cut the edges off, but be careful when you do it because it's quite sharp. You could also use, this was from a pie, and I flattened it out. If you want to have a go at flattening it out, you just need to cut the edge off where it's rolled over. So again, be careful because it's quite sharp once you've cut the edge off. Cut that off, put that over there and then use a tea towel or something to flatten it out. You can pull it a little bit but it will flatten out because the edges, I'm using the tea towel so I don't cut my fingers, the edges are sort of folded up. Whoops! quite tricky you have to be patient do it bit by bit but if you gradually keep smoothing that down your little pie case 
will eventually flatten out. You see it's coming along quite nicely there. It's flattening out a bit and you just have to keep pushing. It's quite hard work so it's much easier to cut the base out of a meal tray but if you can't, haven't got a meal tray, you haven't got a pie dish or you don't want to have all that hard work, if you just keep working at it, it does flatten out. Eventually you can use something like the end of your scissors to, to flatten it out once you've got it quite flat. So that's one I did earlier. So I'll use that in my demonstration, but you could also use a piece of kitchen foil. So once you've got your piece of tin, I'm going to move this sketchbook out of the way. You need to have a magazine or a newspaper or something to lean on. You need to be leaning on something that's not as hard as a tabletop. And the side that you draw on is the back. So on my foil, it's very shiny on that side, not so nice on there, so I'm going to draw on that. But this doesn't really matter. You can draw on the back. Now I'm just going to draw on it. I'm going to use a coloured pencil is probably the best thing. If you're using uh, this kind of foil, you can use quite a sharp one. If you're on this, I would say use a blunter one. Now if you want to, you can draw your picture on paper first and put your paper on top. But I'm just going to draw straight onto the foil. So we talked about Frida like in nature and we saw all those beautiful palm leaves in the background. So here I'm just going to draw some leaves. I'm going to use my coloured pencil. It doesn't matter what colour it is because we're using it now as an engraving tool. We're not using it for the colour but it's a good thing to use. So I've drawn a leaf there. I'm going to put a vein up the middle and I'm going to put a bit of detail on that. It works really nicely if you use lots of texture. So around the edge of the leaf, I'm going to dot, dot and dot, and I could carry on, or I could add another leaf coming down here. Don't press too hard, especially if you're using the kitchen foil, because you don't want to go right through it. Now, I've just done a little bit on there, if we turn it over, it's probably hard to see in this light, but you should be able to see the leaf there. And the more you put on it, the more um, decorative it becomes and the nicer it looks, the way it catches the light. You would do exactly the same on here. I'm going to do a flower on here, but you can press harder. If you've got a, a food container, the foil is thicker, so you can press harder. It's a bit ridgy there from where I've opened it out, but it doesn't matter. I'm just going to keep pressing. I'm going to add the petals as I go around. I won't do the whole thing, but you get the idea. I'll put one more petal in there. And you can add a little bit inside there. Go back to that petal. I'm going to put some dots in the centre. And you could keep on going round and round. You can see it's a little bit confusing with the creases but you can go over it make it really stand out you keep going over it and if you finish that off there you can see it much better now you'd have a nice flower so I'll just show one more time the one that I did in here with the container so I've got the bird that I copied from the necklace and some shells and I've put some leaves in it all nature things inspired by Frida Kahlo. So I hope you found something you've enjoyed doing there. Carry on in your sketchbook, have a go with some other ideas. I'll see you again in a minute. Well I hope you enjoyed working in the style of Frida Kahlo. It's a little bit different to what we've done for the last couple of weeks but once again the colour is a really important part of her artwork. There's lots of her artwork out there you can always Google it, find it online if you want to see more, or you'll see it all around you. Hope you've enjoyed Frida Kahlo week, and next week we're off to India. See you then. Bye.